either grab it and just give it to me or it was the hand that just took it away. Because I know that I can't feel so bad if somebody takes it from Sam.
Thank you, wonderful William and Mary Choir. Good evening, everyone. Please do be seated. Let's see who's here. Anyone from the class of 2026? All right, that was a mild welcome. Let's see if we can be louder. New grad students? Hmm. OAs and RAs. Transfer students. Oh, that was good. That was really good. Uh, returning students. Okay. Okay. Faculty, staff, parents, families, administrators, neighbors. All right. All right. We'll see how loud you can get as the evening goes on. Welcome to William and Mary's 330th year. This year is going to be different once again. We're used to that now. We are adapting our traditions and inventing new ones, as is in William and Mary's DNA, and has been for so many centuries, like student assembly using hearth as the location for the student's community pledge, brilliant idea, leaders, and like an evening convocation, when the moon is rising and the sun is setting, the temperatures are beautiful tonight. We're joined by Rector Charles Poston and members of the Board of Visitors. Please wave, say hi, give them a welcome. And other public officials, wherever you are, please wave and we will welcome you too. At William and Mary, we open important ceremonies with our land acknowledgement. Taylor Fox, class of 24, will read the acknowledgement and then after Ms. Fox, William and Mary's Chief Academic Officer, Provost Peggy Agouris, will give remarks. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Fox. Good evening, everyone. Please join me in acknowledging and paying respect to the indigenous peoples who are the original inhabitants of the land we are on today. The Cheronaka, Nottaway, Chickahominy, Eastern Chickahominy, Mattapanai, Monacan, Nansamon, Nottaway, Pamunkey, Patawomek, Upper Mattapanai, and Rappahannock tribes and we pay our respects to their tribal members, past and present. Good evening. As William and Mary's provost, I'm honored to be representing our faculty tonight and delighted to be welcoming you new students uh, to William and Mary. But first, to our returning students. Welcome back. Thank you in advance for all that you'll be doing to offer guidance and show our newest students the way. Remember when you were here the first time? The excitement, the worry? Well, you are where our new students are gonna go to for help, advice, and support. Good evening to our new and returning faculty whose dedication to our students to world-class research and scholarship, teaching primarily and service are unparalleled. Our students are so fortunate to get to know you, learn, grow as scholars with you, and really continue your work. In case you hadn't noticed, we do like our traditions here. This opening convocation is always a highlight a tradition that marks the official start of the academic journey at William and Mary. Congratulations, you made it. Let's take a moment to inhale and exhale. Look around and take it all in. We are surrounded, surrounded by your great promise. To our newest students, especially those of you who are gonna be living and learning for the first time on your own, yes, we want you to show us your talents and continue to reach for the stars. 
That won't surprise you. This is William and Mary after all. At the same time though, please remember to find a balance and take good care of yourself. I hope you all had a chance to unwind and unplug a bit after your senior year before you arrived on campus and that you'll remember this night and this advice. Yes, again, we are just getting started with the year and I'm already talking about taking a chance to pause. It's true. We want you to find a chance to pause whenever there is a break in the academic calendar. I was recently able to visit my people, the family and friends I hadn't seen in years due to the pandemic. And I'm here to confirm that time was exactly what I needed to recharge. So take those moments throughout the year. You too will soon find more of your people here. It might be the person sitting next to you right now. You too will come to experience the William and Mary value of belonging. Joining this community means you are well acquainted with high academic standards. Excellence is in fact another core William and Mary value. And then there's my favorite, flourishing. We know that you're resilient or you wouldn't be here this evening. You accomplished great things while learning during a pandemic and we want you all to flourish here. So on the way to flourishing and for all the times in between, remember to embrace any bumps in the road and reach out for help. We know it's not always easy to ask for an assist, especially for the high achievers that you are. Yet, there is a universal truth. Academic stress can and does happen at every university. The good news is that you've made an outstanding choice to join this community. William and Mary and a commitment to your wellness go hand in hand. Remember that. As you consider how to work through any academic or other challenges, please note that we have tremendous resources here. Remember that our faculty want to be partners in your journey and hear for, from you, that tutoring will be available to you, that the caring professionals in our counseling center are here for you, and that maybe you'll even find a new passion with meditation, yoga, art therapy, loud music, whatever. You've got this, and we got you. And we want to hear from you all along the way, so tell us how it's going. Share your feedback. And here's a shameless promotion for those who might want to engage with our Provost Advisory Group, a group of students that offer input to me um, on their academic experiences. New voices are always welcome, and there will be opportunities for you to be involved. Finally, I want to reiterate what President Rowe just mentioned. You are joining William and Mary at a momentous time in the history of this great university, in our 330th academic year. You're the next ones to make history here. I started a tradition when I arrived in weekly messages to the faculty of giving shout outs. Tonight's special shout out is for you, the class of 2026. To our newest members of the William and Mary community, undergraduates in the class of 2026, new transfer students, new graduate students, our newest members of the faculty, welcome and congratulations. Thank you, Provost Tagoras. Now, for a very special presentation, Mahin Saeed, President of the Class of 23, please join me at the program. Thank you, Provost Aguras. Graduate students, transfers, freshmen, welcome. Each year, the sophomore, junior, and senior class welcome first-year students by presenting them with a class banner. Transfers or graduate students, your banners are already hanging in the Sadler Center. Mia Tillman, president of the junior class, and Yenny Chang, president of the sophomore class, 
are above me on the balcony to help present the Class of 2026 banner. We hope it will be a symbol of unity and belonging for your class throughout your years here together. And in the years that follow, as you, like all classes before you, become alumni of William and Mary. The banner will remain here for a week and then be moved to the Sadler Center, where it will hang until your commencement. Since there is not yet an elected representative of the class of 2026, President Rowe, we ask that you accept this banner on their behalf. Madam President, it is my honor to accept this banner on behalf of the great class of 2026. Unveil the banner! Our convocation speaker tonight is Cliff Fleet, President and CEO of the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. President Fleet holds four degrees from William and Mary, a Bachelor of Arts, a Master of Arts, an MBA, a JD. Are you missing anything? <laughs> We're working on the next one. He chairs the William and Mary Foundation and serves as an adjunct professor at the Mason School of Business, and I have come to know him as an insightful and forward-thinking leader and a fantastic partner. Together, William and Mary and Colonial Williamsburg and our city aim to make this city the national destination for understanding U.S. democracy and for expanding who we think of as the nation builders who founded our republic. So we are very honored to have President Fleet here today to speak and to greet the class, the incoming students. Please welcome me in, please join me in welcoming him to the podium. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So it was a little over three decades ago that my mother and I put a few bags in the back of a Ford Ranger pickup truck, pulled out of Albemarle County and headed east. And about two hours later, she moved me into Yates 214. <laughs> yeah. it, it looks just about the same. As it <laughs> and I felt while I was excited to come to school, I felt a little bit like she had left me on the face of the sun. It was so hot that day as I came down from the mountains. And I would like to think that there was some deep logic in how I chose William & Mary, but I confess today that there was not. I wanted to go away from Charlottesville, where I had been born and raised. My parents forbid me to go to Virginia Tech. So I had to come to Williamsburg because state schools were my only option. But what I found after I came here was that William and Mary had really chosen me. This is a very special place. I found small classes, professors who cared, an environment that was intimate enough on campus where you could get involved in things, but big enough so that you wouldn't see the same people every day and can grow and learn in a diverse environment. And so what I wanted to do tonight was talk about a few things I wish I had known when I was you over 30 years ago. Because I've had the benefit of having a William & Mary education for many years now, but there are things I wish I had done different while I was a student here. The first of these is to learn as much as you can about as many things as you can. Now, my mother was a science teacher. And she had three boys, and we were quite energetic. And she focused our energy on school so that we didn't focus our energy on each other and end up in the hospital. I thought I had a good education until I came here, and I learned I knew almost nothing. Anthropology, geology, philosophy, different cultures, religion, places, people. It was like a whole new world opened up to me. 
And as I've moved through life, I've recognized the essentialness of learning about those experiences and those people. Because the problems that we face today as a community, a nation, and a world are very complex and inherently interdisciplinary, which means that we have to have people who are facile enough to move across different disciplines and different thoughts, which means we and Mary is a perfect place to learn those things. If you think about climate change, one of the most pressing issues that we face as a nation and as a world, yes, it is a science problem, but it is also an economics problem. It's a geopolitical problem. It is an equity issue. And all of those disciplines and many others must be brought to bear as we think about how do we solve the issues of today. The second thing I wish I had thought more about is find your superpower. Now this is a concept my brother and I have long talked about. All of us have something, and many of us may be blessed, although I'm not, to have multiple things, which we are passionate about and we are very good at. And finding that is the secret to having a fulfilling life and a life with meaning and purpose. I was recently reading a book, or a couple of books, by a local author named S.A. Cosby. And he actually sharply defined this in a quote that had deep meaning for me. He said, nobody ever called a fish dumb because it couldn't climb a tree. All of us have different skills and strengths. So in my journey to learn as much as I could about as many areas as I could, I ended up in a chemistry class. And I was okay at chemistry, at least I thought I was in high school. But it was very clear, after about two weeks, I was a fish trying to climb a tree. And while I obviously got out of that class, otherwise I wouldn't be standing here today, I learned very quickly that chemistry was not for me. However, history and politics and geography was for me. Now, I had a roommate when I was here who was a very dear friend of mine. And we had a lot of things in common. We both came from rural areas. We both liked to play basketball. And we both liked to enjoy a cold beverage on the occasional weekend night. He was a fish in water in chemistry. And he later ended up going and getting his PhD at UNC Chapel Hill and now does drug research. And I'm running the largest history museum in the country. So I guess we ended up where we should be. However, William and Mary helped us find our superpower. The third thing to think about, and this becomes increasingly clear, or unclear as you'll see in a moment, as you age. And that is that we need to be comfortable being uncomfortable because life is complex and often the path forward is not clear. Now I remember absolutely nothing from that chemistry class, except for this one thing, which is actually one of the most important lessons I took away from William and Mary. And I remember on the first day of class, she stood up and she said, when I came into college, I knew I wanted to major in chemistry because I wanted to learn everything there was to know about chemistry. So when I graduated from college, I realized I actually knew less about chemistry. She said, so I went to graduate school to learn everything, I, everything about chemistry. And when I got out of graduate school, I realized I knew even less. Now, was she saying that she didn't actually learn anything as she went through school? Of course not. What she was saying is the more she knew, the more she realized she didn't know. Knowledge actually is essential but we have to recognize that there is such a large and vast amount of knowledge in multiple disciplines that we will never know it all. So let me tie this together as it relates to William and Mary. What I'm really talking about with those three traits is the value of a liberal arts and science degree, which this school delivers better 
I believe, than any place in the nation. It's a liberal arts and science degree which will teach you and give you exposure to multiple disciplines. It will give you exposure to different ways of thinking. It'll expose you to different people and different processes. It'll teach you to write, to speak, to think critically in multiple disciplines and multiple places. But I believe the most important thing that you will learn by being a student here at William & Mary is you will learn how to learn. It is impossible for you to learn everything that you need to know next week, at the end of this semester, at the end of the year, or at the end of your experience at this school. However, you will learn how to learn, and you will learn how to operate and be exposed to multiple disciplines, which is the secret to success. There is much written in education and study today in education about the need for technical skills, that we need to be producing people with those disciplines. And obviously that's true. However, what's lost in that is the essentialness of a liberal arts and science degree as a core to that. When you look at CEOs and other leaders of organizations, while there is much that they don't share in common, one of the greatest traits that they share is a foundational core in liberal arts and science, which enables them to be leaders and apply lessons across multiple disciplines. Now, you are entering the school at one of the most important times in its history. 2026 is fast approaching. And this community and William and Mary have played an essential role in the formation of this country. And so the spotlight will be on us over the next few years. William & Mary is called the alma mater of a nation. It is the only school that can claim to be so. I stand today on the steps of the nation's oldest building in a university, 1699. So as we think about William & Mary and its contributions, while we are the alma mater of a nation in the past and the present, it is incumbent upon you to make sure that we remain the alma mater of a nation as we go into the future and in the years past 2026. I wish you good luck as you begin your college experience. Thank you. Thank you, President Fleet, for that inspiring message. Uh, I want to share uh, one of my favorite stories about William & Mary students. I, it changes every year because it comes from a Call 150 class that changes every year. Uh, every spring they invent slogans to welcome the next cohort of students who will be arriving at William & Mary, the next freshies and transfer students and graduate students. Some of you may take this course, so this is a bit of a preview. When they invent that slogan, they're imagining who they want to recruit and what they want to say about us as an institution. And here's what last year's group came up with to welcome you, the new students this year. William and Mary, unprecedented as usual. Now, you all do know something about an unprecedented time, unprecedented path, unprecedented work. You are arriving from a record pool of applicants from across the world. Some of you are the first in your family to attend college, and you came to the right place, as I hope you're hearing tonight. William and Mary people have led change for centuries, as President Fleet just said. All over campus, you can see the transformations that honor trailblazers. The Sankofa statue, just around the corner, celebrates our first African-American students. Mary Branch Munford Plaza, in front of the library, celebrates our first women students. And the Art Matsu Arcade at Zabel Arena honors our first Asian and Asian-American students. And there are more innovations like these to come throughout this decade. 2023 will mark the 300th anniversary of the Brafferton Indian School 
right over there. And to remember our first American Indian students, a new initiative will center Native history and presence at the core of William and Mary's identity, consistent with the prominence of the Brafferton and Native education in our charter. Ongoing partnerships with Colonial Williamsburg and tribal communities will grapple with the history of that school, its complex and nuanced history, and the legacy of those who studied there. As we strengthen our relationships with tribal communities, that legacy will build in mutually beneficial ways. You're gonna frequently hear me say that William and Mary here is a place where adaptation, perseverance, and service runs very, very deep. We think about that in terms of the past, we think about that in terms of the present and the future. And at each convocation, to highlight those incredibly important qualities, we honor two individuals with President's Awards for service to this community. One award goes to a member of the faculty or staff and one to a member of the student body. Each receives $500 to donate to a service agency. Our faculty recipient is Professor Janice Parker. Please stand. <laughs> Professor Parker is here with her family. <laughs> Professor Parker works alongside community partners to design research-based programs such as the Success of Students program, the Resistance in Sisterly Elevation, and Camp Eager which really took off this year. Her work has become a national template for community-engaged programs and learning. This year, Professor Parker will work with the Bray School Lab, I'm so excited, as a William & Mary Strategic Cultural Partnerships faculty fellow. Professor Parker has chosen to donate her award to Youth Outreach, Urban Resources and Services. Congratulations, Professor Parker. Their families are right here. So let's be loud, folks. Our student recipient is Ashley Wong, class of 2024. Please stand. <laughs> Ms. Wong has tutored ESL learners through Literacy for Life and Fairfax schools. She builds community as a co-captain for the Chinese Language House and served as an EMT in Williamsburg and Loudoun County. Ms. Wong also volunteers with Therapeutic Horseback Riding and she donates her award to Spirit Open Equestrian Program. Congratulations, Ms. Wong. Now, the great American author James Baldwin told teachers at the start of the new school year, it is your responsibility to change society if you think of yourself as an educated person. At William & Mary, we change to advance what we value most, like Ms. Wong and Professor Parker. We build the community we seek, anchored in our values of respect and belonging, unprecedented as usual. So new students, you are joining this history-making tradition when you walk through the Wren, as you are just about to do. You have the best classmates, faculty, staff, and peers cheering you on. This is your moment. We want to celebrate you, and to do that, we're going to do something a little different this year. We're going to light up the Wren in this way. Thanks to the generosity of alums, Bruce and Spass Christian, we are completing, we have completed an installation this summer that honors Sue Girdleman, the campaign chair of William & Mary's For the Bold campaign. So let's take these lights for a test drive, shall we? Okay, let's say it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month or Valentine's Day. How about Pride? Juneteenth? How about 4th of July? You get the idea? We light up our community when we invent new traditions that draw us together. Can we get some green and gold lights? Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. 
In a moment, the choir is going to lead us in the alma mater. If you need a refresher for the words, the lyrics are printed in your program. Sing loudly, okay? Afterward, all new students, listen up. Stay where you are. The platform party is going to lead you through the Wren building, and everyone else should move swiftly to the other side of the Wren, or if you want to sneak in here because you have a student who's coming through, you can do that too, where staff will hand out new students' Wren traditions pins, as well as William and Mary's swag, courtesy of alum Bruce Berenger. And there is just one last thing to do. Okay, choir, you ready for my cue? Get ready. All right. As president, I declare that William & Mary's 330th year is open. Mary, love.
Hello. Here.
Thank <laughs> you. 